Hi, this is Gabe Staples with electricrcaircraftguy.blogspot.com. Now I wanted to show you an Arduino project that I've been working on recently. Something that's taken a lot of time has pretty much everything. So here I've got my fancy schmancy uh, Turner Z 9XR radio. Great radio, lots of programming features, I really like it. Here's a uh, a uh, Arduino Nano compatible device. I actually sell this on my store as well. Um, I think I've got a few left in stock. And I have interfaced it with MATLAB. So I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration here. I'll show you a couple or a screenshot or two later. So here's a MATLAB, uh, the MATLAB program. I've got an application that I wrote which has a graphical user interface I click run it opens up this panel I'm gonna maximize that I go ahead and set my COM port to COM13 because that's the COM port associated with my Arduino Nano I hit uh, start here connecting to the Arduino and now you can see that it says that I'm connected you can see the frames updating but you see nothing on the plot well the radio's off so I'm gonna go ahead and put the radio right here so you can see both simultaneously as I turn the radio on once it starts transmitting you'll see stuff pop up on the screen there it is so now you can see live data coming onto the screen and this data corresponds to what the transmitter is doing So I can go ahead and move the sticks around. I'm just moving the left stick here. As I move the stick, it updates the screen. You can see there's actually a teal plot there too. The uh, blue asterisks are the throttle, the teal is the uh, rudder. And then on the right stick, you've got aileron and elevator down here going on as well. Let me move them real slow so you can see it happen better. Now let me show you what it's plotting. So you can see the PPM microsecond value values here under channel 1 through channel 8. I wrote this code to actually function with a six, up to a 16 channel PPM signal. It really doesn't matter. I can always tweak it to uh, adapt to the transmitter or whatever the case is. It also tells me if the transmitter is on down there. It says TX on equals 1. I can turn the transmitter off. There it is, 0. Turn it back on and it will start refreshing values tells me that it's on again so anyway nifty little tool that I got here uh, I think this has a lot of potential application to turn any Arduino into a data logging system not only can it help you debug the transmitter like I've got going on here but also it can record your flights I mean think about the possibility of um, going out to the flying field and having a GPS on your airplane, recording your stick inputs, uh, maybe something even more sophisticated where you record gyroscopic data as well as, as, well as accelerometers and also all sorts of things like that. Pretty soon you can have an input versus output correlation. You can develop um, flight controllers and uh, vehicle um, dyna dynamic models to model the dynamics of the vehicle. So you can do a whole lot of stuff with something like this. It also demonstrates how an Arduino can be used as a laboratory instrument. So I really think this has a lot of application. At the moment, I am making this function. You can see the frame number is updating pretty slowly, so it's running at a pretty slow frequency. Uh, that's because I still have my code pretty inefficient. It's pulling the Arduino for information as opposed to another P-O-L-L-I-N-G in, in, in oppo as opposed to uh, streaming data from the Arduino and I have not run the profiler yet in MATLAB to refine this code so I need to run the profiler clean up bottlenecks I've actually started doing that but I haven't implemented it in this in this iteration of code yet so that's something to come in the future but I expect to be able to get a maximum data logging frequency of somewhere around 300 Hertz by the time I'm all done. However, it won't be able to update the plot that fast, so it'll probably have to be a plot that updates every now and then and just re refreshes the new data under the screen. Also, if you look into my source code, you'll see that I'm sending the data in a pretty sophisticated manner. 
I'm using binary sending and receiving and, and creating binary packets as opposed to using ASCII characters, which would be the standard way to do stuff through serial. Uh, and this requires using unions in C and to pack the data, create the data packets, and then using uh, special typecasting in MATLAB to unpack the data. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to go ahead and post the code and put brief instructions on instructables.com to explain how to get all this up and running. So, uh, thanks for your time. And don't forget to check out my blog at electricrcaircraftguy.blogspot.com. And you can also subscribe. There's some buttons at the top right of the blog. And feel free to check out other posts that I've written, see what kind of stuff I've been up to. But anyway, thanks for your time and have a great day.